Copper 2 chloride is a useful brown solid and a blue green solution, which can be used as a catalyst for both organic and inorganic reactions, as a fungicide for refining different materials, and for many other things. For the remainder of the video, I will assume that copper will remain in the 2 plus oxidation state, and thus will refer to compounds without the oxidation number. To create a copper chloride solution, I used standard 3% hydrogen peroxide and hydrochloric acid. I found the hydrochloric acid at a hardware store that was in the form of a pH control solution for pools. I also used aluminum foil at the end to test if the copper was dissolved, but this is an optional step and isn't really required. For the source of the copper, I used some copper piping that I found at my local hardware store. I'm not actually sure how pure the copper was in these pipes, but it seemed to work for what I was doing. Alone, hydrochloric acid will not react with copper, as copper has a higher reduction potential than hydrogen, and thus hydrogen in hydrochloric acid cannot be reduced from the 1 plus oxidation state to the 0. In order to fix this problem, we can utilize the fact that hydrochloric acid can react with copper oxide. This reaction is a simple acid-base reaction because for the most part, metal oxides are basic in nature. In this case, copper oxide is a weak base and will easily react with strong hydrochloric acid to form water and copper chloride, which is easily soluble. To start out, I added about 250 milliliters of distilled water and about 200 milliliters of hydrochloric acid to partially dilute it. Hydrochloric acid is usually clear, but in my case it was yellow, either because of impurities or some kind of other dissolved solute in it. I then added one copper pipe to a large glass container. Each copper pipe weighed about 12 grams, which represents about a 0.2 moles. Because of this small amount, the hydrochloric acid is going to be in excess, which will be important to know if you intend to use the solution in a reaction. I, however, intend to be evaporating it away and obtaining the solid copper chloride. After adding the pipe, I added about 200 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. If I was trying to create an exact solution, I would have measured it out more accurately, but as I said before, I intend to be evaporating it away at the end, so I didn't really care too much about exact measurements. As you can see, nothing really happens when I added the hydrogen peroxide until I added my acid solution. At this point, the copper pipe rapidly turns darker in color. This is because the acid is able to break down the coating on the copper pipe, which allows the hydrogen peroxide to oxidize it into copper oxide. I'm not really sure how well the camera picked up on it, but if you look closely, you can see the solution turning light blue around the copper. This is the copper oxide reacting with the hydrochloric acid to form copper chloride, which has a blue-green color when dissolved. I left it out for about a week, and when I came back, most of the metal was already dissolved, and I was left with a very dark emerald green solution. At this point, I probably could have stopped and decanted the solution into a storage vial, but instead I wanted to test it using aluminum foil to see how well the copper dissolved. Clearly, based on the color, there was a high concentration of copper chloride in the solution, but I mostly did this test for fun. I added about 10 milliliters of distilled water to a test tube, and then dropped in about 3 or 4 milliliters of my solution. As the drops hit the water, it dilutes the solution, and you can see the infamous light blue color associated with copper ions. To test this solution, I intend to perform a single replacement reaction in which a metal of high reactivity, in my case aluminum, reacts with a dissolved salt to precipitate the dissolved metal ion. Since there is excess hydrochloric acid in my solution, the aluminum will also react with that, forming hydrogen gas. I add a small chunk of aluminum foil to the solution, which at the beginning reacts slowly. However, over the course of the next few seconds, it builds up in speed and you can see hydrogen gas bubbles forming and the red copper precipitating out of solution on the aluminum metal. Unfortunately, the glare from my window kind of disrupts the view of the reaction, but you can still see it pretty decently. When I poke it and move it around with a glass stir rod, chunks of the copper metal flake off of the aluminum and fall to the bottom. This ensures that there is definitely dissolved copper in the solution. Throughout this video, you may have seen that I am not using gloves and you may be surprised, but really, this is because spilling a little bit of hydrochloric acid on your hands is not the end of the world, and as long as you don't leave it there for an extended period of time, the worst thing that can happen is maybe a little bit of irritation. However, hydrochloric acid, if splashed in your eye, will rapidly break down the tissue and can cause permanent damage and even blindness. For this reason, it is absolutely mandatory that you wear eye protection of some sort while working with hydrochloric acid. Finally, this video is my first video, so I'm still trying to play around with camera and audio techniques, and if anyone has suggestions, they would be greatly appreciated. Also, if anyone has requests of certain extractions or syntheses, leave them in the comments and I'll try to get around to them. However, I have no professional equipment, so some may be a little bit out of my reach.